All right, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll do it after, <clears throat> maybe after class, actually. And if I don't, just keep bugging me until I do. Yeah, of course. But yeah, if you guys have questions, just go ahead and just ask them. You can uh, unmute your mic, too, and just ask. It makes it easier since I'm painting. I know Martin had a question. Martin, you there? Yeah, hello. Hey, what's up, bud? Yeah, um, well, I've got a question, and it's like regarding the, the film industry. Um, cool. Uh, I know, I know um, two guys that you know quite well. It's Andy Park and Ryan Manning. I think you were at um, Santa, Monica, Santa Monica together, weren't you? Um, uh, I, I didn't work with them directly, but I, uh, right. I worked under their legacy. They left way before. All right, okay, but um, yeah, it's regarding like Marvel Studios and stuff, because like you see their work and they've they've got very painterly, like you know, they paint all their character designs and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's kind of different for the film industry, because a lot of the film industry seems to be like photo bashing and 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 all that. And I was wondering if 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 that is just the case with like Marvel, is, is that just like their special case, and or do you get do you get chances to do you like painterly work in the um, in the film industry? Uh, well, what do you think? I know the answer, but I'm uh, curious to what you think. Well, that's the thing. I've only, I've only ever seen it from I've only ever seen that from like the people who work for Marvel Studios. So, uh -huh. um, because like other stuff like people that post their work is normally normally like photo bashing and stuff. So. I was, just, I was just wondering if that if that is just a special case of like Marvel Studios and that. It is a. It is absolutely a special case. You were right. Your suspicions uh, were right. <laughs> Very rarely <laughs> do you see people draw or paint for the film industry nowadays. Um, I mean, there's other special cases too, but it's always special cases. You know what I mean? Yeah. On a, on yeah. on the large. Holes usually photo bashed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I even did photo bash stuff, so it's like when I worked in the film stuff. But I also yeah, did some things too, you know? Yeah. But if you're going to... Okay, the, cool. The whole reason why Marvel uh, gets away with it too is because, you know, Charlie and, and Ryan are really fast too, and they're pretty good. And so they like... They like the artistry. Like Marvel is like a comic book company, so they like the fact that their artists are artists still in, in that traditional sense. But they still kind of photo bash too, uh, especially yeah. in their illustrations and their more um, 3D. I'm sorry, they're more um, elaborate set pieces. Hold on, I need to need to yeah. mute the server for a second. Um... <laughs> I'm going to mute general for now, so that way I don't keep getting just crazy chats. Um, but yeah, you know what I mean? It's 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 something that I get, like, it's kind of like, uh, I, I wish I could just paint and just paint and paint and paint. And you can. Uh, yeah. You could do it for some game studios still really love the art of painting. Some film studios, like it's not like you cannot work for Marvel. That that still could happen. Yeah, get, just very, get good enough to work difficult. for Marvel. Yeah, it's just very difficult. Yeah, sure. You know, like anything's possible if you if you really just put your your heart and mind to it, right? Um, yeah. But uh, the 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 thing that I would say too is that like you know, learn photo bashing too. There's nothing wrong with that. Like uh, you know, there's people who photo bash and paint and do a really good job of combining the two it's really cool um but there's like yeah. the, there's other strategies that just be faster at painting because you start looking like john park um he's like really fast painter right? and he's getting really yeah. good. um and he he works in the film industry and does stuff like that you know yeah he's just kicking butt like him and the team of people that are working there and just like kicking ass <clears throat> you know and so yeah. it's, it's just it's just a matter of like like what your ambitions are and, and your your goals. 
and then just try to stick to them and get them done. Cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's a really big, like, problem when students feel like they have to do something just to get a job. Um, it's it's more like just no, just try to be as best you can and do the kinds of things you like, and there there will be jobs out there for you. Um, uh, but there are there are clear. I'm not trying to say that they're at an equal level either. For instance, doing photo bashing and 3D might help you get jobs easier. You know what I mean? Though, but the question would be: Is that is that what you want? You know. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I love, I do like that side of um, it as well. I, I took um, Maché's Learn Squared course for the that futuristic character yeah. design and stuff, and I do, I do like that stuff as well. So yeah, so so it's, it's up to you, kind of what you think. Um, yeah. Because yeah, you, you got to remember this is what you're going to be doing. That no one else is going to be doing it for you. But if you like love the Marvel mm -hmm. like like that kind of stuff and you want to do that, then you get into aim for that and it's very very large target but it, it might not it might mean something different like you might never really work there right but you yeah. will work for other companies that will appreciate that the skill set you know yeah like it's not always just like you have to work for marvel it's like like uh you know you could be anybody but like uh yeah like carla ortiz i think did some stuff for marvel she did some designs for the the doctor strange is cool yeah i saw on her facebook she, she was she did it she designed this costume i think yeah which is cool yeah because like, not normally normally like the costume designs and that is, is normally like ryan manning and andy park and that isn't it yeah so she might have worked with them to do that yeah i, th I think i think she is i think she is at marvel studios now no i mean like i think she's worked at there like as a contractor i think she's part of the union now so she's working in films Oh, right. oh, okay. I think she works at Disney yeah. and like as a contractor or something. No, I, I don't know. Yeah. I'll ask her actually. I'll see what's up. I'll talk to her. That, 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 what's up? That union thing's hard to get. Yeah. All that shit's hard. Not impossible though. <laughs> Keyword. Like there's yeah. nothing that it exactly. is. Cool. Okay. Uh, anyone got any questions for AJ? <laughs> yeah, I think someone said something. In the chat. Can you just say it out loud though, so I can hear it? Oh yeah. Um, I wanted to to ask if you could go over the whole time management, because I heard about that. Um, was it eight eight four? Oh oh. So what I told Robin to do, uh, it wasn't really a time management thing. It was more like uh, is like a timer thing, like using timers. Oh oh okay. Right? So like I, I told her to do her thumbnails in fifteen minutes to twenty minutes, but to check in every eight minutes instead of like don't like just put a timer for twenty minutes and when twenty minutes goes by, oh well this is as far as I got. It's like no check every eight minutes. So like on eight minutes you can be like oh my gosh I've only painted like half the torso, and you, but you still have eight more minutes or you have um, twelve more minutes really mm -hmm. to get it done. And it realigns your mentality at that moment. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. So, like, if I, if you're like, okay, I'm gonna try to get something done in an hour, break it into 20 minute intervals, so that way you're constantly catching yourself being distracted or not distracted or whatever. Like, you could be like 20 minutes in and be like, oh man, I have a full body. You know what? I'm just gonna jump onto another character. I'm just I'm gonna try to do three characters in an hour, and I'll just cycle through that way. Yeah, there's there's a lot of advantages to just constantly checking in on yourself. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's that's specifically what happened. And in terms of time management on a, a larger scale, um, yeah, you just gotta like, uh, if for those of you who have a hard time managing your time, you feel like you, you keep running out of time. Uh, it's because you don't know what you're doing throughout the day. You need to like write a checklist of all the things you can you do throughout the day, and include the things you want to do in a day. And go through that checklist, and if you do not accomplish any of the stuff on that list, then that means your schedule's all screwed up, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and you just got to realign. You just got to redesign your schedule. Uh, but 
a very valuable tool. And I'll probably will do this for some student eventually who still has issues. A very valuable tool too is to just straight up, uh, you know, write down hour by hour what you do in a day and just look at it and just be honest with yourself and include stuff like dicking around, right? Like everything that you, you do incorrectly too, right? Like everything. And yeah. that way you can see, well, yeah, I spent like seven hours playing Battlefield 1. That's probably why I didn't get my work done. You know, yeah. it's just hard to quantify if you're not looking at it. And yeah, the more honest you are with yourself, then the the easier you can be like, oh, yeah, I should have been a little bit more wiser at that time. You know, seven hours is like extreme, obviously. But like, you get my point. Like, if you can see that you spent two hours on the Internet and you're like, why was I on the Internet for two hours? Oh, it's because I was like checking my Facebook the whole time or whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. And I was yeah. watching YouTube videos. I was watching PewDiePie videos for like an hour. And that's a half. that's what happens a lot of the time. I put like a song up to listen to, and then I end up like watching three or four videos before realizing that oh crap, I I should have been working. Yeah. So a combination of using a timer, um, writing down what you think goes on in a day, and then living through that and seeing what really happens. You know. Mm -hmm. And then just be honest with yourself. Don't lie. Because if you lie to yourself, it's one thing to lie to your your employers or to your um, to your teacher or to your bosses or whatever, right? But yeah. you can't lie to time. Time still moves regardless of what you think, right? Yeah. And how you yeah. feel. Time is still moving. Um, mm -hmm. And so you have, to, you have to respect that. And so... Time management is exactly that, like time management. You're managing what you're doing with your time. And if you do that, then you can play video games and you can do work. You know, you can do everything. You can, you can have that leisure time. You can watch that hour-long YouTube video marathon thingy. Um, but it's because you earned it because you, you did all the stuff you needed to do for the day already. Uh, I use a timer all the time to, to get work done. Right, mm -hmm. and I, I got very good at it, where I don't have to actually pay attention to the timer anymore. I, I know what twenty minutes feels like, you know. Yeah. Because I've done it for like over years, and I just really can feel how much time has gone by. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still not so good at it when I'm talking, because when I'm talking, I talk for hours, and then I don't realize how much time has gone by. <laughs> um, but like, if I'm just painting and there's no distraction. Um, I, I really am in tune with time. That's the thing, like, when, when you're painting, I guess, you do realize, like, every single thing that you're doing, but for me, for example, when I start painting or, like, doing any sort of thing, I would spend, like, time min 10 minutes probably actually, like, really focusing on what I'm doing. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden my brain goes into autopilot mode and literally I would spend probably like, I guess, 30, 40 minutes on a painting and then realize, oh, I wasn't thinking about any of the strokes that I was doing. Sure. And then realize, oh, then there's a mistake right there, there's a mistake right there, and how am I going to fix this? And I'd have to end up like putting out another layer and redrawing on top of it, and that's, I guess, what causes me, like, not to finish the paintings, because then they end up taking so long. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess. So what are you going to do about it? <laughs> yeah, more focus, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you think that I was born this way? Do you think that I just no. laser-focused all my life, and I was just like, dude, I can, as soon as I get started on anything, I can definitely do it. <laughs> You know, no, of course not. not. Like, no. and even you thinking that me thinking of every stroke and everything that I'm doing, that's not true either. Of course I'm not. Like, because I, if that was true, then I wouldn't oh be able God, to, really. that, if that was true, I wouldn't be able to be talking in painting. Yes. It's because to me, painting is like uh, walking. Like, I just do it. Yeah. You know? And the only reason why it's like that for me now is because of all the years I've practiced it. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, um, someone was talking about, the stream yesterday that like when I was trying to paint a panda 
Uh, if you go watch, you can even see, like, I, I get distracted. I'm, like, talking, and then I stop. And, like, I'm like, what, what was the saying? What did the person say? Because I don't know how to draw a panda. I was just like, how the fuck do I draw a panda? And I was, like, genuinely thinking, like, how do I draw a panda? And then since I couldn't do it, I was like, well, it's because I don't, I've never drawn a panda. And I remember it was, like, in the chat stream, I was like, yeah, this is, like, literally the second time I've ever drawn the panda. Or this is, I've only drawn pandas two times in my whole life. And you've seen it, you've seen both times right now, <laughs> you know? And yeah. I was like, so let me just go and look into it. And we were doing that, and people in there were watching me learn, and they're like, oh my gosh, it's that simple. I have to check out. If you don't That's know true. shit, if you don't know shit, you can't paint shit. Yeah. And um, I've, I'm, I am a man of my word. I preach, I do what I preach in terms of like studying, you know? Like, I really mean it that if you don't know what you're doing, then stop. Uh, so you said like uh, you have a hard time, you get distracted, and you keep painting, and then um, you lose track of what's going on, and then next thing you know, your painting has gone out of your head, uh, come uh, undone or out of your control. Mm -hmm. So your solution to this is to keep doing it. Like you just keep doing it, and you're not solving the problem, right? So it's like so. Mm -hmm. what's, so the problem isn't so much that you keep losing focus. The problem is that you're not doing anything about changing this problem. You see what I'm saying? Like, you, you tell me, like, you have this problem where you keep doing this thing, and I'm like, cool, bro. And it's like, <laughs> so what's next? You're just going to keep living your life doing that, right? Like, no, of course not. Uh, you know, the advice of using a timer is probably the most substantial advice I can give you. Like, yeah. literally timing yourself so that after five minutes, you'd be like, holy shit, I was painting a toe for five minutes. What was I thinking? You know, you catch yourself sooner, and that's the, the thing you weren't doing probably. You know, you probably weren't doing that before and if yeah. you start doing that now and it's, it doesn't mean that you'll you'll be cured of this either it just means that you'll start paying attention you'll evolve and get better at it and start catching yeah. it more naturally um mm -hmm. or you will just realize you just have to always use a timer for quite a while until you start to really adapt um mm -hmm. you know you, you guys remember there's there's two ways of really growing one is just kind of muscling your way through which really works in a lot of ways it's my my favorite way of getting stuff done uh, because if, if all else fails, if you don't know what you're doing, just muscle th your way through and you're still getting practice in, right? It's mm -hmm. like, you're, it's like mindless. So it's kind of fun. But if you want to really improve much faster then be more mindful, right? Like be yeah. attentive to what's happening, right? At a lot, at like w longer capacities and you'll improve much faster. Uh, and dramatically faster. Yeah, because if uh, yeah, if you just leave it to your own devices, you're just going to constantly just be sitting there um, until one day you get better at it. And that day usually takes much longer. Right? Um, like, I, I gave you guys an example of the moon and the earth thing, right? Like, how far is the moon and the earth from one another? And it's like, the, the, the idea is that if you just keep guessing, eventually you'll have the right answer. Right, but or you could just Google it, <laughs> you know. And for whatever reason, people feel like they can't Google stuff, <laughs> right? Like they don't like you guys know. Like there was a time that might have been true where you couldn't Google certain things, you know. But I mean, it's just like, like how to manage my time. There's even Google even gives you a fucking <laughs> <laughs> like a thing, right? Like ten tips. Let's see if these are useful. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, tip one: carry a schedule. Yep. See, that was kind of the first one I even gave you, right? Second mm -hmm. one: hey, what the audio is coming from somewhere? What the advertisement? Oh, there's a video oh, too. Oh wow. Anyway, I don't want to watch the video. Okay. Um, any activity or conversation that's important to your success should have a time assigned to it. Damn, that's pretty bad, badass. Plan to uh, spend at least 50% of your time engaged in thoughts, activities, and conversations that pursue, produce more results. Schedule time for interruptions. Oh, this is a this is an important point. This is actually something that I learned when I wrote my own lists. Because I was like, when I was running the, the Roller Pencil School, I was doing so many things. Uh, I did a schedule. I had like tw 20 items on my schedule. So I'm going to do all this stuff, including like eating, sleeping, like getting up, working out. And I could only do like 
and then there's like like maybe five or six like major tasks and I could barely do two of them and I was like what the and then I tried it again I was like maybe I can do four and I still can barely do two and I was like why the hell is this happening and I thought about it as oh it's because I constantly am in meetings that just come out of nowhere so what I ended up doing was like okay I can really only do two things and once I counted on that you know as a real problem you know Mm -hmm. um I put aside two to three hours in every day where I would uh, uh, do nothing. You know, it's not like lunch. It's not like working out or anything like, like literally nothing. Two hours where I don't have to do anything. So I could play a video game if I wanted to, or jump onto the next task tomorrow or uh, make up for the time that I lost earlier because I was in a meeting that went longer than normal. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That happened a lot. And once I did that, bam, like things got done so much more efficiently. Uh, In Mm -hmm. fact, uh, I started, I used the to-do list, but that fell off the wayside. So one thing that I started doing that's actually been pretty powerful is uh, I've been using, um, I've been using, uh, what you call it, Google calendars. So you can see right now I haven't scheduled my day yet, but I don't really have anything to do actually. So I'm going to go ahead and say, like, I think right Right around 12 and 1, I'm going to do a stream. Right? And then I think right after class, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to probably do some work and hang out with students. But I'm being realistic, so, like, maybe I'm going to sleep. So I'm going to put this, like, right (laughs) at 11, you know? Because I'm, like, freaking tired. And then I don't know what to do. Yeah, and I'm, like, uh, let's see, 4 to 5. Five to three, like, what else can I do? I know I can only really do two things. So if you look, like, class is a thing, class, right? And so I did stream and then Corbel. That was it. Uh, illustration and website stuff. Uh, and Kaylin's cover, I worked a little bit on that, which was really easy. And then uh, homework and stream and book template. These were all really easy. I did them all that day. And I got started on the illustration. It was just like a sketch. So, like... The beginning of the week was much easier. It's like so today is a day I can do quite a bit of few, quite a few things, and then and also I need to go to the office tomorrow. Go to office, so I might have to move this thing earlier. So I'm glad that we're talking about this so I can actually do this now. <laughs> All right, so now it's, I can see that maybe I need to do this later in the day before class, right? Or even earlier, maybe I need to wake up early and to do all that stuff before, right? We'll see. I'm probably going to put it in later. I'm not going to wake up early. That's already a fact. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I have plenty of time today to do some other stuff, you know? And it's great because I have this synced to my phone. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it's not too difficult. And plus, look, like, there's all kinds of other stuff. You can get, you can find books. Um, uh, there's a book about habits. I forget what it's called. Book. Let me see mm-hmm. if I can find it. There you go. The it's Power a, of Habit. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I read this audio book, um, or I listened to the audio book. Uh, seven effective or highly effective habits or whatever or, or seven habits of highly effective people there's like some really good books and stuff that talk and the consensus is pretty much this take on fewer tasks in each day or each week you know yeah eat the frog is probably one of the greatest examples of this basically it says like you know just try to take down the hardest tasks first and then the rest of your day seems much easier Right? So, for instance, yeah. if the homework is the hardest thing for you to get done, then you start your whole day during the homework or, like, the amount of homework that you need to do. And then that way, the rest of the day, if you have other little tasks that you need to do, then you can go do them. But you don't do anything else until you finish that. Yeah, I'll definitely check them out. Yeah, my, my point is, is that my sympathy... Uh, for people that have a hard time finding how to solve this, like uh, little things and stuff, is getting lower and lower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it used to be very high, but now it's getting much more. I'm like, 
Like we mm-hmm. live in a really amazing time. Okay. okay. Um, just to be clear, we live like in the information age, you know, like there was the stone age, there was the bronze age, there was the, um, uh, industrial age, you know, and now there is the information age, mm-hmm. right? Um, and after the information age, I'm guessing there would be, I don't know, the transcendent age or the, yeah, the what? The apocalypse. Oh. The apocalypse. Yeah. I'm very optimistic. I think we're going to be fine. <laughs> the apocalypse age. Uh, we've been we've been looking forward to the apocalypse for every millennia, so it's fine. I don't think. I don't think. I, past. Yeah, I think we're fine. I think humanity is. We're going to get out of this pretty good. We're we're going to be all right. Um, the only thing that truly will screw us over is global warming, because yeah. that. That doesn't give a fuck about our politics and all that stuff. <laughs> you know, like, if people are afraid of, like, nuclear war, it's like, I don't think that's going to happen. It just isn't. It's, it's just can't, man. Um, it's just not possible. There's just too many people are connected in too many different ways. Like, too many countries are connected in so many different ways. That's bad business for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, what will really kill us is with the Earth. It's like, all right, guys. Nice try. I'm gonna reset this. I'm gonna reset this balance. <laughs> I'm gonna repatch the Earth real quick, and then uh, we get screwed. But even then, I think we'll be fine. I think a lot of us will survive, uh, but just a lot of us will also be gone, which will be scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to get off topic a little bit, because I love talking about this type of stuff. Um, yeah, like uh, there is uh, two things that stop. A civil or like a there. I forget what this. There, there's a conundrum that the scientist, or I think it was a scientist or philosopher, ha- brought up, which was like, why don't we see so much? Like the universe is really fucking old, and life doesn't need a lot of time to come, right? Especially intelligent life, right? So how come we don't see a lot of it flying around everywhere, like constantly, like Star Trek, right? Like, like why isn't it everywhere? Like, we're relatively young in the cosmic scope of the universe, right? So where are the the aliens that are the badasses that are interstellar travelers that can just constantly just travel around all the time, you know? Um, and so one of the the conundrums was, like, what was this conundrum, right? Was this. And he says, well, there's probably two factors. There's, or there's three, three real reasons probably why this is true. Uh, one is the most obvious one. They just didn't live long enough because of some sort of uh, external um, catastrophe. Something like that happened to like, the dinosaurs, for instance. The dinosaurs were pretty intelligent life, right? But then a giant meteor destroyed them. Something that they had no power of stopping. Yeah? Um, so we're actually safe from that. External um, dangers are actually pretty – we're pretty safe from most of them, except for like maybe like a, a solar – like a pulsar that happens to be pointing right at us, they could snipe us, <laughs> you know. But aside of, aside from that, like we're pretty good, we're pretty safe. Uh, like we can we can like lasso a meteors if we wanted to, which is a really cool idea, you know. Like you know, Armageddon is not a thing we would do. We wouldn't blow up the meteor. We would like grab it and lasso it and then mine it, which is cooler. <laughs> you mean we're not sending people up there to blow it up? No, no, we're not going to send Bruce Willis and the mining crew, <laughs> right? Uh, we're 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 gonna just send a satellite, and it's just gonna use a, a gravitational pull, and we're gonna lasso it and then mine it, which is oh, way cooler. Awesome. Yeah, way cooler. Um, um, so that's not a problem. So then the next thing is internal, um, internal uh, destruction, which is the destruction of either a civilization that destroyed themselves through war, or um, uh, mismanagement of resources so the war thing i think is gone i think we're past that not to say that we don't have wars obviously people are still fucking fighting for stupid stuff but but that's slowly you know it, it's just it's clearly and slowly going away you know it just is it's subtle but it just is like my kids are going to grow up in a different world where you know discrimination is even less than it is today it's just gonna happen right they're gonna be like what you guys used to uh, ban gay people from getting married why do you guys do that i don't know I was there too. It was weird, <laughs> right? Like that kind of stuff is just gonna go away, right? Like, oh, you guys used to use hashtag Black Lives Matter. Why? Like, why? Why, why did you have that thing? Why did 
black, cops used to shoot black people all the time and have discrimination like that. Why did that exist? So I don't know. I was there too. It was weird. <laughs> right? That's just going to go away. So the, the other one is the one that we're dealing with right now, our mismanagement of resources. We're, 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 we have a lot of food in this world, but we don't give it to the right people. We're, we have a lot of expenses that we're just constantly overusing. Um, and we're constantly destroying our planet and messing it up. And that's the that's the thing that's going to get us right now if we don't fix that. But even that's starting to be fixed. You know, you have people like uh, uh, Elon uh, Elon Musk who's making you know self driving cars and shit like that, which is really cool. You know, so solar power. Like uh, a few people with questions about cars. Yes. Yeah, yeah, questions. Oh yeah, if you guys you guys can interrupt me at any time. By the way, just, <laughs> open, just open your mic and just talk. Say hey, shut up for a second. I have a real question. It looks like right. Robin has a homework question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it, Robin. Sorry, I apologize. No, it's okay. You're, what you're talking about is really interesting, too. So it's like, I want to hear everything, and I want to be patient, and I also know that we're tight on time. So, yeah, um, go for it. So for the the thumbnails and the iterations and stuff, like I've been doing the thumbnails as if it's a bunch of thumbnails for one character because they're all, they're all female. They're all like, like I have sort of a theme going on. Um, totally. so should I do new thumbnails for like other three characters or, or is it intended that I do more iterations of like the same character and I'll still only have like one final for that so one character? If you have one character as the one that you submitted in terms of thumbnails, you can just kind of, you have two options. You can evolve it to be three or four characters, uh -huh. right? Um, you know, we can just pretend that they're three or four characters, right? Yeah. Uh, or you can do what you just said, just make maybe two more sets of thumbnails, and we can choose them for next class. That would be a lot more thumbnails to do, but, I mean, it's it's up to you. It's your, it's your homework. I'm sorry, it's your portfolio. So uh -huh. it's whatever you want to have in your portfolio is important to you. Okay, um, cool. I don't really want to fall behind on the assignment. Should I do maybe like 10? I don't think 10? so. I think it'd be fine. Like okay. just uh, don't don't think that uh, if you feel like you're gonna it's gonna take a lot of time you're gonna fall behind, then do ten, do twenty, do whatever you feel is comfortable. Uh, okay. But in my experience, doing more is better, right? But you're you're getting faster too, right? So you can just try to maybe yeah. do them in ten minutes instead of fifteen, and you might be able to do all of this, right? Yeah. And uh, you might be able to do iterations and the thumbnails. Uh, we can keep it simple. You can just do another character set. Don't do two, but do do one more. We'll take a look at that, and then we'll go from there, you know. Okay, um, cool. And if that's the case, if if you know if that's the case actually, then don't do twelve iterations. Just do one set of iterations, and then do the other thumbnails for the other characters. Okay, gotcha. So that makes more sense to me, actually. Cool, that works really well. Thank you. Yeah, and by the way, uh, the class like if you guys have questions, I don't just end right at nine thirty. If you have to get going at 9.30 because of, you know, your own personal or professional reasons, then stop me whenever I'm on my, my rants about science stuff. Because like I said, I can talk because I love talking about this stuff. Uh, that kind of stuff is really interesting to me. So so anyway, I'm saying okay. don't count on the apocalypse in the way that you would traditionally say. It's not going to be Fallout. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I had a question for you, AJ. Yeah, go for it, buddy. Uh, so I'm interested in like learning uh, more 3D stuff and integrating that into concepts. And of course, you got photo bashing, which I've never even really tried. Um, so I was wondering personally for you how you manage learning all of that, um, sure. especially when just painting alone takes you know tons of time to learn, um, and you always have to improve. So it kind of seems like a tough balancing act to learn whole new tools while still working on your fundamental stuff. Sure. Uh, you can learn both. Uh, just putting priority over one, that's it. It's not that difficult. Uh, and a, a better better uh, way of thinking about this or perspective on this would be, uh, what's your hurry? Like, do you have to, are you, are you, do you only have one year to live? You know, um, like, if you plan to to not die anytime soon, you know, there's plenty of time to learn everything. <laughs> you know, really there is. Yeah. And and just because you think, well, I need to like paint, you know, I want to learn my fundamentals of lighting and design and all stuff. Um, no, you can learn that shit through 3D too. Like it's all it all works together. 
Uh, I used to play guitar when I was 16 years old, and I stopped when I was 20. And I just started doing other stuff. I played World of Warcraft, and then from there I went from World of Warcraft to uh, um, going to school, and then from there I went to become an artist. Right. Um, my point is, is that I can still play guitar. It's not like I lost the ability to play guitar, you know, because I put my, it's not like a RPG. Like I didn't put my skill points into a different talent tree. Now I had to reset my talent tree points. Now, obviously I'm not as good as I was when I first started playing guitar, right? Cause I'm not doing it, practicing it every day, you know, but the fact that I still know a lot of it shows that you retain a lot of information for long periods of time. So what I'm saying is that, you you know, if you spend a week doing some 3D stuff, it's not like all your 2D shit goes out the window all of a sudden, right? It's, if you really think about it, it's, it's kind of silly to think that maybe there is no time to balance the two, right? So no, if, if, if anything, I'm going to become better, right? You're going to learn more about how 3D artists might think, right? And that might educate you to how to paint better uh, um, 2D stuff. Maybe the 3D stuff will teach you how to become a better painter too, right? Because you're going to learn more about your own forms. Because even even though you're in 3D, it doesn't mean that you get free forms, right? Like you still have to like know how to design and create really compelling 3D work. You agree? Yeah, yeah. So it's the the balancing is just a matter of how much you're willing to spend in each of them. And it's like something like we were just talking about earlier about managing your time. Right? So it's like, if you have to do homework for class, but you want to learn 3D, it's like, all right, I'm just going to spend an hour every day just learning a little bit of 3D. That sounds reasonable. Right? Yeah. And, uh, but and at the same time, you're getting the homework done. You know, you're not like, you're not too distracted. And then there's other times where you have more time. You can be like, oh, you know, I'm going to spend three hours and learning some 3D. Because why not? And then I'll spend three hours on my homework or whatever. Right. I'm very, very happy that I spent a lot of my talent tree skill points in art, uh, specifically in speed and learning. Like I, I put a lot of effort to be a better learner and a lot of effort in speed. And because of that, those like exponentially helped me get better faster, you know, because I can like do work. Like if I have work to do, I can do that in an hour or two and then I can go study the rest of the day if I'd like. You know? Yeah. But but I, I've been doing this, right, for nearly a decade now, you know? And I I, I encourage people to be better learners so that they can uh, – oh, wait, who's piecing out? Who's leaving? See you later. Whoever that person is. I just saw people say see ya. Uh, oh, see you later, guy. Do you have any questions before you go? Or are you good? This is all recorded, so you guys can come back and listen to anything you might have missed. All right, anywho. Um, but yeah, there's there's plenty of time. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah? Um, yeah, I get, to, I get kind of antsy because, like, I work in a day job, and I'm just like, ugh, I want to, you know, be drawing for work instead of uh, staring at a software. I so, get you know, <laughs> it. It's, it's distracting, that, that feeling, you know? Don't let that distract you. It's like, because uh, sometimes what it does is it's actually, and why I say distraction, sometimes it deters you from working better because you're just like, ah, oh, I wish I had just like more time. And then you get discouraged and then you feel like it's kind of hopeless. Does that make sense? Right. Um, like that can happen. Not a lot, I'm sure, because you've been doing good work. But like, I'm sure you've had those experiences where you felt like it was kind of hopeless. Uh, that's the worst way of going about it. And you don't want to get, you don't want to get caught onto that feeling accidentally or incidentally or indirectly, you know, trust that uh, there are many other people that were in the same situation as you, right? <laughs> and they just said, well, it doesn't matter, you know, so I just still got to work and figure it out, you know. Uh, you want to be the person that in a year or three or four years from now or five years from now or six years from now, whatever, do a workshop and talk about how, like, you had a full-time job you're taking classes on the side and you were trying to learn 3D and 2D at the same time and this is what you did. And then other artists are like, awesome. You're a great inspiration to me. Right? And then you'd be like, just like me, you'd be like, yeah, it's really simple actually. I just 
buckled down and did it, <laughs> you know? And, and you want to be that kind of person, right? You don't want to be the other one where uh, you're like, you're constantly complaining about what you could have and should have done, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, because again, time doesn't wait around for your complaints. It doesn't care that you have a full-time job doing this stuff, right? But you can wake up one hour earlier and do a sketch a day or try to learn a little bit of 3D, even if it's just making cubes and shit, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm waking up at three these days to like get in some drawing practice beforehand Perfect. and then some drawing afterwards. So absolutely, that's all. That's all you need to do. And just keep doing that for a, a long period of time, and the next thing you know, you're going to be a badass. It, it, it's 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 really it's really that simple. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Um, let me tell you a, a story of research that was done about talent. Okay. So this, this researchers were like, hey, you know, it's talent a thing. And some of them were like, I don't think so. But let's find out. And they're like, all right, so what are we going to do? So we're going to take these kids from the school, right? And we're going to put these kids, these middle school kids, we're going to separate them. We're going to take half of them, and we're going to put them in a music school. And we're going to take the other half, and we're going to put them in a regular school. Got it? And let's see the difference after a year and you know in each each separated class there wasn't any standouts like there wasn't like this this class is clearly better than the other you know you'd have one student in each class that was pretty good at music or some sort of musical instrument and then you would have someone also in that class that had no interest at all right so there was, it was pretty equal pretty leveled right mm -hmm. so then they, a year goes by they check out the results, right? So on one hand, they were looking at the, the students who were just went to the regular middle school or the elementary school students who went to the regular middle school, yeah? And they're looking at the musical talent if they grew any more. Uh, and as you would suspect, the ones that were already kind of in it, the ones that were kind of like had some skill in it, got better, right? Because they had a passion for it and they, they stuck with that passion and it kept going, right? But everybody else pretty much stayed the same. There was no other improvement in any other students. You know what I mean? Like everybody yeah. else was pretty much just like as if nothing changed, which makes sense. That's just how it is. And then uh, with the the other school, the worst student that went to the music school was like leaps and bounds better than the best student that went to just the regular middle school. Okay? So, bam. Evidence. Talent's not a thing, right? Because, look, this kid who clearly had, quote-unquote, no talent is more... Like, if you were to bring him to the other middle school, would we consider, like, the most talented musician? Right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, so... And obviously, the ones that are already good excelled even more, right? Uh, but everybody, on average, was amazing. Right? So they're like, what? Okay, so what does this school do that made these epic artists or the musicians, I mean, right? And it was really simple. All they did was have them do more of it. So, because in the regular school, music was an elective. So, like, there was, like, one class every – once a week, and it was, like, an hour long, right? And those students basically – didn't even have to practice music in the regular school, right? They're just in the music class, but they don't have to practice. Where in the music school, they would have uh, two hours of music every day with like a one hour of music homework. So they're, at the minimum, you would put in 10 hours of practice every week versus the one hour of practice that you don't even have to do. You know what I mean? And so what that proved was that just the fact that these kids are spending more time in it is why they got so much better, right? And it shows that you don't even need to spend a lot of time because this is all done in a year. It was like leaps and bounds. Like these kids are like Julian Arts level now all of a sudden, <laughs> okay? So it's like even if like you have a full-time job and you're doing all this stuff, like if you spend a minimum of like 15, maybe 20 hours a week, um, you'll, you'll improve within a year dramatically. You understand? And you, you, you got to have faith in yeah. that because it's just, this is fact. It's just how it is. Okay. 
So, like, don't get distracted with, like, ah, I don't have seven hours straight that I can do. Like, no, you don't need to. Like, you know, like, th- there's no hurry. Just take your time, you know? And, uh, and eventually you'll be able to transition, right? Organically and with stress free. Key word there, stress free. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause every day you're going to get better, right? You, you know that. And, uh, I always try to prove this fact to people too. Like, you know, Think about how your work was a year ago, or two years ago, or three years ago, or four years ago. It's, you're better now today than you were before, right? And it's just going to continue to happen. And at any time you have more time and you can like totally exploit that extra time, you know, go for it. But on the flip side, I also believe there's a, such a thing as too much work. Okay, and that's something that I was a victim of as well. I think there is such a thing as too much work. And it takes away from your quality of life and potentially grows tumors in your head. <laughs> right? Like what I'm dealing with. Okay. So I think there's a balance between working enough and uh, not working too much. Right. So you can go hang out with your friends, play video games and do stuff that actually is fun and that you enjoy outside of art. Uh, but at the same time, it advances your skill. I'll see you later, Martin. But uh, I saw Vincent had another question. Vincent, what's your question? Oh, wait, wait, before I go, did that answer help you out, buddy? Yeah, for sure. Um, Great. Yeah, yeah it, that's one of those things where it's just like, you know, the answer is just to do it. But uh, still good to hear, though. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I feel like that's always going to be my answer. But uh, what I really try to do is try to give you uh, good practical advice as well. And then more importantly, give you a better state of mind. Because a lot of the reasons why people forget that simple premise is that they just they get distracted with either confidence issues, um, they have bad time management, or they they have just a really warped perspective about it, you know. But it is very simple. Um, and my advice to you is very similar to what I was saying earlier: is just t- using lists, using uh, um, a timers. You know what I mean? Like these types of things are very useful tools to allow you to kind of have more effective time and a, a really big problem is that we have distractions like the cell phones and youtube like i said we're in an information age so there's a lot of information distraction right and so you have to be really good at not being distracted with stuff like that too uh i think there might be there might be an app I, i'm gonna look into this i wanted to find an app that kind of catalogs how much you're on your phone right mm-hmm. so you can catch like you can look at the end of the day oh i've been on my phone like 20 hours today Holy shit, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, like, and you can see that that's a huge problem, right? Um, but to give you a, a statistic, and you, you have to understand that you're amongst the statistic. Uh, on average, uh, people use their phone, like they check their phone every six minutes. Okay? That's believable. That's, that's on average. And when I heard that, I realized I should not check my phone as much. Uh, not to say that I was checking my phone every six minutes, but I believe that that's very true and that's something that and I every time I catch myself I think about that statistic and I'm like damn I'm falling into that statistic again <laughs> right mm-hmm. and so I, I, I do a lot of things especially when I work I put my phone on the on the floor for instance so I don't like if I want to look at it it's like I physically have to do it get to it you know it's not like on my lap or my like right next to my hand it's like something that will alert me to the fact that I want to deliberately be distracted that makes sense yeah Stuff like this will help you manage and all of a sudden you have more time in your hands. Okay. Uh, Vincent, what was your question? If you don't mind speaking up and saying it so I can keep painting this weird thing. um, So I was wondering what's your, um, how you deal with pressure? Like you've been working in big AAA studios. Okay. uh, Like Blizzard and stuff where Uh you get pressure of the deadline but also pressure of quality. Got it. You know? Uh, well, normally it's not a problem because usually they hire me and it's the job that they hired me for. So it'd be weird if I wasn't able to do what they were asking. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, but I understand like if you never worked, like it's just kind of like you jump in and you're just going to have to be good. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but like, that's what I'm saying. Like then try to get hired because you are good already. Um, and for me, uh, the only times I ever get pressured is when they ask me to do something that I don't know how to do, but I voice that. I think that's a good thing you should do. It's like, look, 
I'm a character concept artist. You're asking me to do environments. It's going to take me a little longer. And just voicing that, you know? Yeah. Uh, because for me, it's not that I, I won't be able to do it. It's just harder because I just don't do it all the time. So I'm going to have to use a lot more reference. I might have to use a lot more photo bashing or something like that. Um, I'm going I'm to be doing a lot more studies for sure, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to have to try to do a harder. I'm going to do a lot more work. Uh, and usually after I say that to them, they're like, well, you know, maybe in that case, it's like, it's fine. We'll put someone else to the test. I'm like, all right, cool. I don't feel bad about it. And I think they respect yeah. that too. They're just like, okay, yeah, it's, it's, it makes sense. It's like, I, you look, like if you make me do it and it's not great, it's like, cause I'm not an environment artist. Like you've hired me to be characters, but I am a team player. We'll, we'll, we'll work on this. And, um, but like you have to give me that extra time. So if there's no urgency to it, then give me another week and I'll be we'll be good to go, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm listening. Um, but usually I don't have I don't get too pressured, you know, uh, because I usually know what I'm doing. And yeah. and if there is a time where like I know what I'm doing, but there's still like a very hardcore deadline, like hey, like we want you to do a character, but it needs to be done tomorrow. Um like completed, like fully rendered and everything. Uh, I just say, okay, cool. I just do it. And again, uh, with the characters, there's a lot more confidence there. Um, but I'll just basically just say, I need more time if I need more time. And if I don't, then I just don't ask for it. Uh, I think the key is to be honest with yourself so you can be honest with them. Don't just do it. Just don't say that you can do it just because you can. Um, because the worst case scenario is that you don't do a good job, right? And then they believe that you could, and that's not a very good scenario to be in. And a better example is to tell them that you're probably not going to be capable of doing it, right? Yeah. And then, uh, and then asking for more time, and then when when they do give you that time, then you're in a better position. Uh, but if they don't give you that time and you don't fall through as well as you should, they, they were expecting that. They're like, okay, well, it's fine. We we were all prepared for this to be you looser and we're going to move on we're going to move forward with this drawing uh, i think communication with your leads and your art directors is key to deal with pressures okay. yeah uh otherwise yeah um another thing is just timers <laughs> like especially if you have a sharp deadline like timers man are so powerful i have yeah, like i have three deadline. hour glasses i have two physical timers and I have four timer apps on my phone. And now I'm just starting to use Google calendars. You know what I mean? Like that's time does not wait around, y'all. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So don't let time just be lucrative. Don't let time be some floating piece of thing that just comes and goes. Like no, like be uh, really in charge of your own time. Like look what Robin did, right? Like she was able to do literally the same assignment, right? Yeah. Same fucking assignment in less time and it was at the same quality. And all she had to do was just time herself a little bit more and be a little bit more focused. Yeah, that's right. And and you guys did too. Like some of you, a lot of you guys did the same thing, right? Yeah. So it's 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 it just works, man, when you just pay attention. <laughs> okay? Yeah. And like yeah. I said, you don't have to be excellent at it at first. Like you don't have to be doing like fifty like right now, like like I for the last hour and 10 minutes i was able to paint this right and it might seem impressive you're like, oh my god right like i could never do that i get that but it's it's all illusion what you're seeing is an illusion it's not that i just can do this like i didn't wake up one day and was just like i could paint really weird stuff in color in under an hour <laughs> you know it's not yeah. like that at all and talk and help my students out like all that shit is trained like i've been painting and speed painting for nearly 10 years I've been teaching for nearly six years. I've been talking and painting for pretty much my whole life, or not my whole life, my whole career, right? Mm-hmm. Like from when I was a student, me and my friends would be in the room together, right? And we would talk and paint, right? Yeah. Uh, so I have training in that. Um, uh, I, I'm a good speaker, not because like it's just natural. It's like because when I was a kid, uh, I moved around a lot, right? And because I moved around a lot, my uh, my parents, you know, like had to make me move to schools all the time. So every year and a half, I had to make new friends. So I had a choice. Do I either become antisocial or do I become social? Do I learn how to talk to people or do I like just stay in my own corner? And my parents are boring. So, and I'm an only child. 
So I decided uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to hang out with my parents. I want to hang out with other people. And so that's what I did. And I got really good at talking with other people. I, I, was in, uh, I did team sports, right? Which is really mm-hmm. very powerful tool to make friends and learn how to make friends um, and talk to people. I was in drama, so I acted. You know, in high school, I was in a band, so I was in, yeah. on stage a lot. You see what I'm saying? All that shit adds up. So now when I do public speaking and talk about art, both I'm, like, really good at art because I've earned it, and I'm really good at talking because I've earned it. So I'm never nervous when I'm in front of people at all, right? Yeah. But all that shit's just earned. So, again, it's just like, a, you know, whenever you're, you're trying to think about, like, how to deal with any kind of anxiety or pressure you're going to have at work, just try not to get a job doing something you have no idea what to do. That's really what it comes down to, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, don't take the job just because. I had people that done that, and they're like, yeah, I took a job doing environments, and uh, it's like fucking impossible, like hard. I had this one uh, guy who was a modeler who got a job at Sony Santa Monica, but like he had like one or two, uh, one or two, uh, what you call it, uh, sculpts that he did really, really well, right? Mm-hmm. And they asked him how long it took him. He's like, oh, these, you know, took like a month, you know. But he lied because it took him actually like a year to do both of them, right? And he got the job because they're like, oh, a month, that's perfect. And and he got the job and they're like, all right, now do this in a month. And he's struggling. And he, he had to quit because he was like working 12-hour days, you know. He'd work on the weekends. And he was like really screwing himself over, Right. Mm-hmm. He, he he should have told the truth, or at least a more uh, a closer to the truth. Like maybe he didn't have to say it took him a year to do two characters. He could say it takes me a few months to do a character, and that would have been closer to the truth, and they would have been yeah. a lot more lenient. And then maybe they wouldn't have given him the job, and maybe he wouldn't have to deal with all the stress that he had to go through, right? Because he's dealing with people that can can do characters in a month, like Raph Grissetti, right? And he had to deal with that pressure, and he's just like could not. He, it was too much. So I guess my advice is like, you know, know what you're good at. Don't lie about what you're not. Right. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Randall has a question. Yeah, someone else had a question, right? Go ahead. And ask. Yeah, I had a, I had a question. Go for it, brother. Uh, one of the one of the reasons I was like so fixated on like game concept art was because like way way back when I did some freelance illustration and I really hated like looking for work. <laughs> So I wanted to get, like, a studio job where I could, you know, like, go to an office and put in hours and not have to worry about where my next paycheck was coming from. Yeah, I get you. Uh, is, it, is it possible to do that with, like, the cartoon studios? Yeah, man. I don't know. You, you tell me. What do you, what do you think in, in, in – what do you think is possible? Do you think so or do you not? Do you think it's impossible or there's, there is – Unlikely, or is it likely? Oh, dude, this looks dope. It's like a weird shark skin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no I'm like, going to change this up a bit. Um, I mean, the answer is obviously yes. Nintendo is a studio. DreamWorks is a studio. Adult Swim is a studio. Um, mm-hmm. All these places are studios. Right? The, the question mm-hmm. isn't so much, is it possible? The question is, how difficult? And, and then after that, is like, is, does that bother you? If it's really difficult. Okay. Ken, I want you guys to be the examples. Wait, hold on. See, Robin says, I've worked in an animation studio. They're, those are really secure. Yeah, see? So, bam. <laughs> Case in point, one of your peers. So, so you should talk to her more about it. Because okay. for me, my, my answer is generally yes to everything. <laughs> okay? Like, whenever mm-hmm. a student asks me, um, is something possible, I say absolutely. Especially if, if it's reasonable. If you were to say, like, is it possible that I can touch the sun? I'd say, um, probably not, you know, but even that I'm very like, you know, because I believe that we, if, if we can live another 30, 40 years, then I can mm-hmm. be immortal. I really believe this. Sweet. I think so. Right. And I'll explain real quickly. And I'll get back to the question, answering the question more thoroughly. It's because, uh, you know, 30 years, 40 years from now, think about the technology, how good medicine will be by then. Right. We'll have like apps that will know how, what diseases you have before you got it, right? And know what vitamins you need that day. And you just say, oh, I need those vitamins. And then they'll just, Amazon will ship it to you in a drone, right? Sweet. And then, and then think if you, then that will let you live another 40, 50 years with that kind of technology medicine, right? And then think 30 or 40, 50 years from then, 
the tech kind of technology that would exist, right? And then so on and so forth until we're immortal. So then eventually, yeah, you could touch the sun probably because we'll be microscopic like beings, or we'll be like uh -huh. we'll be like a, a a singularity of some sort, right? And we're not uh, we don't have any physical body. And then they say, hey, remember that one day in class, AJ? Because now we're a hive mind that you, we were talking about touching the sun. Yeah, we're doing it now. How cool is that? <laughs> right? But, sweet. but right now, that's not very reasonable, right? I was like, ah, I don't know. But, you know, can I get a full-time studio job at an animation company? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. absolutely reasonable. Okay, you know well, I mean? let me let me change my question a little bit then. Yeah, go for uh, it. How, how, like, difficult would it be to get a full-time studio job with the skills I have now? Oh, it'd be pretty difficult. So okay. That's a very practical question. Those are actually much more yeah. practical, right? Uh, because that's a very specific, and I can answer that really easily. Like, it, it'll be pretty hard, right? Because for, for okay. two two reasons. Why one is that I think your skill's not there yet, right? Mm -hmm. Which is easily fixed. You just keep practicing. Okay. It might take a year or two to really get to that point where you're freaking badass, right? But uh -huh. but that's like that's easy. That's like an easy thing to fix, right? Mm -hmm. You just just draw and practice and study and get your your ass in there, take more classes, maybe from people that are more uh, conducive to your style, like that, like teach specifically that, right? Maybe you can uh -huh. find some, like uh, Steven Silver is a great example of that. Uh, there might be more Gumroad videos out there, or there might be someone that you admire. Maybe they take you under their wing. There's all kinds of ways that this can be solved. It is actually very easy to solve the problem. And it doesn't imply that it's easy to do. It's just easy uh -huh. to solve. Got it? Like the path, the plan is easy. It's just uh, yeah, absolutely, cool. yeah, absolutely, okay. right. Like if I want to be good at three-point shooting, like if I want to be a good three-point shooter, I just gotta s sit down every day and do three-pointers every day, right? Okay. But is that yeah. easy to fucking do? No, right. <laughs> I have to set an hour of uh, time. I'm gonna sit down, sweating my ass off, and shooting and missing constantly, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the, yeah, the, the 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 getting better at that is easy. So the next thing, which is not as easy, but it's uh, it's not as easy because it's 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 something that um, is still evolving. People start to try, still figure out, but I think it's still pretty easy to kind of solve, which is building a name for yourself, which makes it easier for people to find you. Okay, mm -hmm. there's two problems to getting a job: one, having good work, and two, people knowing that you have good work. Okay, Got it? and so. Uh, all you got to do now is like make a Tumblr or make like a blog and just start posting your work often. And as you evolve and as you get better, people will start following your work. It won't happen at first. Right? At first, it's just kind of like no one will follow you, maybe one or two people. But as you get better and as you start to show something um, really promising, people will follow you exponentially, right? And the reason why I say it doesn't start off uh, – now I'm indifferent about this shark skin stuff. What do you guys think? This or this. I like the gray one, just because I can kind of see more detail in it or more yeah. texture. You know, let, let, let's give it a chance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to paint on this a little more and add more detail, and then if it still looks like garbage, we'll, I'll just go back to the other one. I think it's just because it's so different than I normally would do. That's probably why I like it. But I think you're right. But we'll we'll give it a chance. Give it a chance before we completely say hell no. Um, so like uh, like I was saying like you know being recognized so you know posting your work often and showing your work online the at first it's going to be a slow burn and a lot of people get frustrated because like, I don't have a lot of followers I'm doing what you said volume volume I said like, yeah but you have to understand that volume is not necessarily like volume is a great strategy and that's my strategy why I have a lot of followers because I submit a lot of artwork often again why I'm very happy that I put my talent tree into painting quickly because <laughs> I'm constantly posting stuff more so than any of my other peers can ever do. Right. Um, and it's good now too. It's good. There was a point where it was terrible, but now it's good. My artwork's good, which is great. So I like, posting often and it's good. So I'm really exploding, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, but there was a time that wasn't true, but what it did is it taught me how to post often, right? It gave me that habit of just like posting does it make sense and because if you don't have that habit then you just don't, won't do it all of a sudden even when you are good like i know plenty of great artists that just don't post artwork after like at all you know uh -huh. 
and then very every like every once every full moon they'll post like all their work and it's great and it's like da, 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 da. And there's like celebrations on Facebook where everyone's like oh my god who's this person they're amazing you know and then we all like go crazy and then silence radio silence for another three years Craig Mullins is that person right um, you know but I I do like the PewDiePie uh, strategy which is just post often you know and it works because it's just you build that habit so that's why i suggest people making a tumblr or a blog or whatever so they get in the habit of posting often you know what i mean uh and then eventually when your work starts getting really good uh, then that's when people start to notice it and even more so than they did before which is great right um and then you also start to figure out who your own voice is because you start posting stuff online you start to see what people gravitate towards or what people don't you know Mm-hmm. And someone like you, I would highly recommend doing fan art, like that's really in, in, interesting. And I don't mean like just draw like Adventure Time characters. I mean like draw Adventure Time characters in a way that nobody has imagined them. You know, okay. does it make sense? Yeah. And uh, like, kind of like, being creative with with someone else's stuff. Yeah, I, I believe that people already know. Yeah, I believe fan art is best served when it's like a satire or like it's a parody or a revisioning, not a okay. complete copy. Uh, of whatever it is because for one that's that that is like commission artwork um mm-hmm. and which is great it's, there's a career there but i think if you want to like land jobs and get people to recognize who you are uh then have something have a voice in all the things you do even when you do van, fan art mm-hmm. right so so going back to adult swim right i, I worked for uh-huh. them i did something for them Okay. Um, you know, have you ever heard of the game uh, um, Robot Unicorn Attack? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, they had that one song that. Harmony, harmony, oh yeah. That stuck in your head. <laughs> I wanna be with you, be oh, with yeah. you. That's the... Harmony, <laughs> harmony, ha, ha. So I did this fan art because <laughs> me and my friends were playing the game, and I was like, "This is how I feel. I feel like it's like a heavy metal." like 80s like super binder art right i did this artwork uh-huh. and while we're, we're all singing the song i was painting it i was like ah this is amazing right uh, a year later adult slim comes to me and says hey we're working on the sequel to the game we want you to do the cover illustration and i said oh. okay and i did the cover illustration Nice. Robot unicorn, you know, yeah. <laughs> with, <laughs> with, with a horn, a unicorn horn. <laughs> Robot yeah. unicorn attack evolution. Yeah. Uh, and if you, uh, every time I go to Facebook too, um, I'm constantly reminding, reminded that I worked on it. Do you see that? Do you see the ad for it right there? Yeah, yeah it flashed by. Yeah, I'm like, hey, <laughs> that's my artwork. Cool. <laughs> you know, constantly reminded that I worked on that goddamn thing, and it was a pleasure. Right. Huh. Okay. So they like sought you out for that specific fan art. Yeah. Like, they saw that and they were like, "Oh, that's so cool. We want to put that on our front cover." Yeah, Angry Birds. Right. I love that game, so I did Angry Ass Birds. I should have hyphen. <laughs> I should have hyphen it. I should have hyphenated <laughs> it though, like Angry Dash Ass, not <laughs> not Angry yeah. Ass Dash Birds. You know, not Ass Birds. <laughs> yeah. So this is an illustration I did for that. See, it's like the, see, it's like the second thing too, right? If you look into angry ass birds, um, and if you yeah. do, yeah, see, I'm the uh, there's a fan Kotaku, art of the day. There's a Kotaku post. And they got fifty thousand views, right? Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I did like the I think there's I did like a, a, a April Fool's Mega Man thing too, Smash Brothers illustration, right? Um, and then I did, uh, yeah, Nintendo Fight Club, exactly. Um, but I just basically called it Smash Bros, right? Because it's basically Fight Club, but Smash Bros. And then I did, uh, uh, Noir Mario Anthony Jones Reddit. Let's see if that, find it. Well, like, Luvisi does the same thing where he kind of, like, his whole Muppet thing, where they're, like, either Absolutely. gangsters or, yeah. um... Yeah. Yeah, so he just puts his own like spin on it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so these oh, are, are disturbing. These I did these like 
So this was in 2012, but I did these way before that. And someone discovered it, right? And then they put it on Reddit. And you can't see the views. Oh, there you are now. The views are 5 million. Or almost 6 million views, right? So the only thing I might have done wrong is I didn't put my name on these. <laughs> right? I didn't put my website on that. And I still don't do that. I shouldn't do that. But uh, but you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, what I did is like, I, I, I first was just drawing a portrait. And I was like, this looks like Daniel Day-Lewis. I was like, what if Daniel Day-Lewis played Mario? I was like, I'm just going to make this Mario. <laughs> and it's called mm -hmm. Mario. And I'll make a noir story. I wrote like this whole backstory, everything. Like Luigi is like a drug addict. Um, Mario <laughs> is like a competing plumber, but he's also working for the mob. Bowser's a mob boss. Toad still is a, a drug Oops. dealer. And then Princess Peach is a stripper with the name Princess Peach being the stripper name. Right? <laughs> so it's kind of like, yeah, what Dan was doing too, like recently, like with the, the stuff. But he's been doing that stuff even before too. Like he just happened to just stick with it and make a whole book about it. Uh, and it's like stuff like this, like, and sometimes it's hit or miss. Like, uh, like yeah, you know, I did these, and these are clearly more popular than what I did of other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a good way for people to kind of recognize your skill and your your imagination and your creativity. And if you really think about what a concept artist is, sometimes it really is you, you are just redesigning someone else's ideas. Mm. You know? Yeah. So it's not bad. I, I think uh, a lot of people look down at fan art um but that's stupid uh and i think uh you should do fan art that is fan art meaning that you actually like it don't do it just because oh you know right now game of thrones is popping like oh dude uh, uh walking dead i better do a fan art of walking dead like i don't like walking dead so i'm not gonna do no fucking fan art for that goddamn tv show <laughs> you know you know what i mean like i have no interest uh i'm not a big fan of game of thrones i actually turned Turn my opinion after watching the latest season. Season, I think it's great now. But I originally wasn't, but now I'm like in it. Um, but I still don't. I'm not that big of a fan. That I would probably do fan art. You get it? Yeah. So it's like things I I really care about, not just things that other people care about. Yeah. Like I still love Angry Birds. Uh, I like Clash Royale. Like that game. That's really fun. I like Dark Souls. So like, if I were like, oh, what if Clash Royale and Dark Souls met? But that doesn't make sense to me. That does that sandwiching doesn't make any sense to me. You know, mm -hmm. like, uh, but matching two genres together is something I love to do a lot of. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and by the way, some of the most amazing paintings that have ever been done in the history of things that have ever been done are fan art or some commission artwork, like the David. That's technically a commissioned fan art from the church. Can you do uh, the David from the Bible? So, yeah, sure. <laughs> there's a lot you know. of fan art with David. Yeah, there's a lot of it. All over the freaking, all over Italy. Yeah, go there. There's tons of fan art from just from the Bible. You know what I mean? Like or commissioned work. <laughs> yeah, you hear what I'm saying? No, it's like, uh, like it, it's fan art for a reason. Like use the word fan and the word art very literally. You know, make it your own artwork and be a fan of it. Uh, and that'd be my best advice. Uh, and obviously, have your own stuff like. I, I'm lucky now that I've gotten to the point where people know me for my artwork, like the kind of stuff that I do, like this, right? And I'm building that audience, again, slowly but surely. Right? I might not have millions of people following me, but I don't need them. Uh, the, the amount of people that I have now is enough to, to keep me uh, to have a, make a living from this, which is, that's all I really care about. So publicity is like a, a big part of this, huh? Yeah, it really is. And it's never been easier to do it. Like, you don't even have to be social, that's what I'm saying. All you got to do is make a website, post stuff there, and put it in front of people in all different platforms, from DeviantArt, ArtStation, uh, CG+, whatever the hell you fucking want to use. Just do it and do it consistently and often, and then the next thing you know, you'll have a huge following. And people will reach out to you just organically. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, was there any other questions? If there's so, how many more? Uh, I'll finish the last. This will be the last set of questions. I think there was one more, right? I saw someone write something. Mm. No? Does anyone have a question right now that they would like to ask? 
Yeah, don't worry. This is just the first week. There'll be plenty more opportunity, guys, to ask more questions. If you can't think of one right now, they'll be like, ah, oh, I missed this opportunity. And even outside of class, like, the way that I see it, we're all friends now, like, truly friends, you know? You know, I, I told you, like, there's two ways to really get make a, 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 get a career in this, and uh, yeah, I still kind of like the, I still kind of like the gray, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could get a little bit of both. Let's see what happens. Um, but uh, my point is, is that, you know, like, you know, you have to have quality work, and then you also mm -hmm. have to, uh, you know, be friends amongst, you know, uh, make friends in the industry, right? Mm -hmm. And be a good person. Just make friends naturally and organically. And uh, I, I uh, am telling you this because I said, you know, publicity and putting your name out there is a is a big part of it. Uh, but you know me. So now all you got to do is just get good. <laughs> I just come to you and be, hey, AJ, I got this stuff to show you. Yeah, and if it's good enough, I'll absolutely help you out the best I can, if I can. Give me, give me a job. Give me a job. Yeah, I've given some jobs. <laughs> I, had one student, I had one student in one class who, like, Marco Djurjevic posted, like, a job opening at uh, Six Month Vodka. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, sweet. Like, Maki, you should apply for this job. And he's like, ah, I don't know. You know, I don't think I'm good enough. Um, and I was like, dude, you're like, I don't even know why you're taking my class. Like, you're so good. <laughs> Seriously, he was really good. And he's um, like, oh, you, you, you taught me a lie, whatever. He's super humble, super flattering to me. And I was like, I don't care. Like, you're good. Take this job. And he's like, I don't know. I was like, I don't even think I can get this job. Like, just do it. And he's like, I don't think so. And then I applied for him. I went to Marco, sent Marco some stuff. <laughs> Marco was like, this guy's amazing. Tell him, tell him to, to submit through the or the natural channels, right, to the actual site and stuff yeah. like that. And I, I just said, hey, Ma Maki, I, I applied for you. Marco Djurjevic loves your stuff, so now you just got to go <laughs> online and do it. And then he was yeah. like, what? Really? And I was like, yeah, you idiot. And then uh, and then he, he applied, he did the art test, and now he's working there. He's one of the better artists there, you know? Um, one of my students, uh, Mulan, now works over there. And Milan asked me, he's like, should I take this job and whatever, because we were at IUCC. And I was like, duh, if you want to, you know? And he's like, okay. And I was like, and then I think because Marky, uh, Maki and Marco now know that my, like, I have this, my students are really cool. They do good jobs. It made it even easier for Milan to get a job there, you know? And, uh, you know, with the uh, edge control, like, uh, Robin, you were, like, I don't think you went to edge control, but you were in Toronto at the time. But, like, uh, you know, edge control, like my two students were like, oh, we want to do an event, but, or we want an event in Toronto, and I'm like, okay, make an event in Toronto. And they're like, oh, we could do it? I was like, yeah, I'll give you all my resources. You guys are good enough to do it. And they did it, and it was great. You know, and... Yeah. Uh, That's what I'm actually hoping for, like, to, at the very least, get out to uh, conventions and stuff, because honestly, I've never done that before. And I live all the way in uh, Wisconsin, and I've even, like, checked up to see if there are, like, events here. The only thing I can remember right now was, like, Anime Milwaukee or something like that. Yeah, and so go. that's in March, so I'm, yeah. hoping, I'm hoping to start going out yeah. in there. Yeah, go to the events, with people. talk to people. The worst case scenario is the same thing that would happen if you didn't go. Right, like you don't get a job, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Same thing, but what's the difference is that you meet people that will tell you, hopefully, tell you why you can't get a job in different ways, yes. and gives you more information, and maybe yeah. even help you tell you how to get a job. Yeah, right? basically, that's actually, you know, that's one of the re like the reasons why it's it's not also for me getting a job. It's just like to actually meet people who are like interested in the same stuff that I am absolutely because yeah I'm I'm uh I I work in a lab so not Wait, many what do you people do? there what do you do I'm I'm a cell and molecular biologist oh dude that is cool are you <laughs> are you serious yeah I'm a microbiologist I'm I work in the lab just doing like uh tests and stuff and it is interesting, but it gets quite repetitive, and gotcha. we we do get to see some gross stuff. Uh, you should be a creature designer. I, 
like we one time we got a whole foot someone's foot in like a awesome two, and i was like i could not handle that but, <laughs> that is oh, cool man that's really like i'm actually really inspired to try to become some sort of scientist in the future like i mm-hmm. want to be a, a astrophysicist oh that's tough yeah, I agree. Yeah, that one is a tough one. I'm going to do it. Like, I'm going to do it in my 40s. I'm going to start. And uh, I'm going to devote my time and effort for 10 years and just become uh, an astrophysicist. Yeah, it's going to be hard. Yeah. But uh, yeah. whatever, dude. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what is it? And uh, it's going to be cool to be an astrophysicist and like slash artist. So I can be like able to design what I believe is out there <laughs> and draw it. Yeah, That'd be a cool advantage over my other colleagues because people are always weirded out like especially when i started working at that lab it's like oh what did you study i was like yeah i studied biology and all that property but i really like to draw so i want to do that and like what then why are you here it's like because it pays so well yeah I even, like, so take... awesome i'm glad that you're here i'm glad you're one of my yeah. students because i'm going to use you as an example from here on out forever forever <laughs> in every class from here on until I die because I always say yeah. like I, I literally was just telling some of the students earlier right like I said don't just do it just to get the job because if you're not into mm-hmm. it it's, you're gonna you're gonna feel unfulfilled right yes and yes, you're yes, like yes. you're like the perfect example in the best possible way because it's not even like you're doing a job that's related to it's like a job that pays well and it's like a very like you know respected job too it's not even just like you're like some sort of yeah. uh, and- like high manager at old navy or something like you're someone that's making some pretty good changes <laughs> and you're like i don't feel fulfilled i want to draw <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, that's cool. and on top of that and on top of that i work third shift so i'm awake all night and i sleep yeah. all day yeah you're awesome i'm glad to hear that um because there's a there's a, a a person that i that's kind of my role model there's a few there's a the guy i think he's like one of the guitarists from led zeppelin i believe or one of these like epic bands who's like an astrophysicist he's like both an epic oh, guitarist yeah. and an uh, astrophysicist so he's like someone that i looked into and then you have uh james cameron who's my second favorite who like he makes movies so he can just go underwater yeah, <laughs> right he does like makes, mil- makes million billion dollar movies and he's like all right cool like he was yeah. he did a ted talk where he was talking about like he went to uh he wanted to make Titanic, not to make a romantic movie with like Leonardo DiCaprio and that would be a blockbuster hit or anything. He wanted to do it mm-hmm. because he wanted to see the Titanic. And he's like, I need to see the Titanic if we're going to make this movie. <laughs> <It is> awesome. <laughs> and so they took that footage and put it in the movie to kind of justify his, his claim. But he's like, I really just wanted to see the Titanic. I can care less. <laughs> about the movie. Uh, and the movie made a lot of money and he like, was like, oh, tight. I'm just going to be a marine biologist now. I'm just going to, or marine explorer exploratory person i'll see you later and he just went deep deep into the oceans you know which is really cool Mm -hmm. and that's what i feel like i want to do right i want to do something similar to that like just kind of completely paradigm shift uh it's not and it's not because i don't like art i love it actually i love it it's really fun uh it's just that i love science and space a lot and so i want to be a part of that world in some way so Anyway, yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, of course. Go to events, conventions. Where, where are you getting? You said you're. Uh, I'm in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, you should try to go yeah, to Wisconsin. larger events too if you can. Like now, I know you can yeah. afford it because you, you yeah. have like a really good job. <laughs> so you should try to go to like an event like IFCC, like one of those like larger ones or THU even, just really get the whole should, yeah. experience. Uh, IFCC right now, I believe, is selling tickets. So you should get some, and I'll see you there. We'll hang out. Yeah, I got Max to get yeah. there from here, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, I'll see. I see it. Most of you guys will be over there, um, and we we host events too. So if you guys ever go to those events, I'll see you there too. But uh, IFCC is a pretty big one. Uh, THU is the biggest one for our industry. Um, mm-hmm. So absolutely, go go to to as many as you can and start getting the experience. I live in California, and I take full advantage of every time there's an event here because mm-hmm. I know that's something that's very valuable to my my career and I always encourage people to do stuff like that uh, I know Robin you do stuff right like you go 
do you hold booth? Like you had a boat booth and did you have a booth this? Did you? Are you still? Yeah, here? I had a booth in Van Expo. Yeah, how was it? What was your experience? Um, basically my experience. Like it's it's always been good. I've I've been doing conventions for a while, but my one of my good friends gave me the best advice like two years ago, where I was like, I don't know if I should get a booth at a convention. Like I'm not ready. I don't have anything. Like I have no prints at all, and I I, I should get some work before I pay like five hundred dollars for a booth. And he's like, dude, just do it. Like, don't wait until you have work, because you're never going to have it. If you just buy the booth now, you'll, you know, be put in a sink or swim situation. So. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. See? It's like, uh, if if you need to do that, or you need to, like, I was talking to a student about, uh, she was, like, concerned about, um, she wanted to make a book. book. And she's like, I just don't know how to go about it. And like, I try to go to these conventions, or try to get a booth at these conventions, and whatever. I'm like, just do it. Just try and try and try. And if they say no, who cares? Just keep trying anyway. He's like, if if I stopped every time someone told me no, um, then I wouldn't be teaching you guys anymore. I wouldn't be here, right? Like, I've mm-hmm. got rejected so many goddamn times. I've been told how awful my work was so many goddamn times from so many different people. You know? It's 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 silly to think that you should count on waiting till you're ready to do something. Just start doing it, and if you're not ready, you'll find out, and then you'll learn from that, right? You'll you'll expand on that. It's better to to like the kinds of failures that a lot of you guys will deal with are very very uh, safe. Like the worst that a lot of you guys are going to deal with if you get get a booth or whatever. It's probably some expense will be lost, and um, you'll be told uh, that you can't work or do something. Uh, and on the flip side, you'll have other people telling you you can and give you great advice, right? I had a student who went to CTN. He loved it because he said at the beginning he was kind of skeptical because everyone was telling him how bad he was. But he, he was like, you know, it was really good, though, because it really was helpful to me, you know? But what really helped was that one piece of advice that he got from Ryan Lang. Ryan Lang was like, he's like, I want to work in animation, and you work there, and I would love to do that. And he was like, all right, cool, come with me. Ryan Lang like got up, left his booth, grabbed my student, and just took him to like the bookstore that was like in CTN. Took him, like took my student, just like, walked him over there, left his own booth. Like seriously, Ryan Lang just did this. <laughs> took him over there, showed him all the books that he said, like, I have all these books. These books really helped me throughout my whole career. and They're really awesome, and you should buy these books, and they're really great, and just study them every day, and you'll, you'll, you'll grow and grow and grow and be great. And he's like, next year, I would love to see you. Just show me what you're up to. And uh, he was like, that, that whole experience, that alone, was, like, worth the whole trip. And sometimes that's all it needs. Like, you just that one experience with that one person with that one, t- like, thing might change you. Or the collective of all the things that are told to you and stuff too, right? It's not just one or the other, right? So yeah, I went to I went to IFCC last year and sick. just the experience is like the first time I ever met a professional artist and it's just like a lit a fire under my butt just be drawing so much more. Plus, like you like meet all these people and uh, you interact with them and they like, uh, see people around the world that are improving with you, so it's definitely super worth it. Even if you have to buy a plane ticket or whatever, it's kind of expensive, but worth it. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty expensive, but it's a very great experience. I love I love IC, IFCC. And we party hardy. Party hard. <laughs> <laughs> the guy I remembered it from last year, the, the guy that uh, VIP, he's, he's going to remember us again when we show up here. He's going to be like, all right, this, this restaurant is yours. It's pretty much what happened. We just took over it every day. Every day. It was great. Uh, yeah, remember that. Remember slash don't remember. <laughs> um, anywho, cool. Um, I'm going to stop it here, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the painting. I kind of did a little bit of both. Let's see if I still... Yeah, I still kind of less like him naked. The, the combination looks pretty good. Yeah, I like... I'm it's just going to stick like with this. It's combined both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to stick yeah. with both. I'm just going to keep... Pushing it. virus or something. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's get microscopic. Let's look at all the grossness. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, dude, that's really cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to pick your brain, then. If you go to yeah. IFCC, we're going to have talks. You're going to start teaching me some science. Sure, for sure. I, I bought some, or I sure. got some apps that uh, are going to teach me some basic arithmetic and um, trigonometry. I'm starting to get into it. I'm just doing a little bit at a time whenever I have a little bit of time. And so one day I'm going to be able to do math in my head, like Neil deGrasse. Because when you were talking about the whole uh, Armageddon thing, I, I wanted to add a comment. But yeah, I, go for it. I, um, so not only, I guess, global warming, but right now what we're having to deal with is uh, the different types of organisms that are becoming resistant. Yeah. So we we actually have like one case, I think it was one or two cases here in the U.S. where the person had an organism that was resistant to the whole panel, so 20 different mm. types of antibiotics. And we're right, like, the, I don't know why, but here in the U.S., um, they've been using, they use mostly antibiotics, but what they've started in Europe is using phages, which are viruses. So they would inject them with whatever um, DNA they needed, and they would target specific cells instead of going rampant around your body. Yeah, so but like, for some reason, like U.S. Mercenaries. Yes. Like biological mercenaries. Yeah. Like going past so. the law. Not Osborne <laughs> Jones. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. So getting to the kind of the point that we were saying earlier, I'm gonna end the class on the Armageddon talk. <laughs> it's like the whole all this politi political stuff is not really a big problem. It's like yeah. stuff that is like na na nature is gonna get us if anything gets mm -hmm. us. Because um, we're we're evolving as a society in terms of getting our shit together, but nature doesn't care if we get our shit together or not, right? It's that's what we're that's the real that's the real clock that we're fighting against. Uh, yeah. you know, people are freaking out. Oh, Donald Trump's gonna be president. <laughs> like it's fine. Like it's not gonna, not, he's not going to do anything crazy. Is is he's just, we're just going to have a stupid president again? We've had one before. We were, we survived. You know, um, it's like what's I'm really worried about uh, stuff like you just said and um, and stuff like yeah. global warming. Things that scientists are like constantly like, dude, what guys? <laughs> like mm -hmm. keep your eye on the prize, y'all. You know. Yeah. So sure. anyway, all right, cool. I'm going to end it here, guys. Thanks again for great questions, great dialogue, conversation. I appreciate it. Uh, have a good time working, y'all, hanging out with each other after the class. Um, hold on. can't see the go-to meeting. Sometimes this happens. Okay, there you go. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep painting this. I'm probably going to work on this a little bit more. I'm going to probably jump on Discord a little bit later, do some work too. But uh, anyway, my point is, is that, uh, yeah, use Discord, guys. Hang out there. Hang out, be friends, mm -hmm. befriend one another outside of class and inside of class. Like I said, uh, some of you guys are not, you know, at the point you need to be in your career, but in time you will be. And if you guys are all friends on a genuine level, that's actually very beneficial to you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because there was no agenda, right? Like I'm not, oh, I'm friends with, you know, so and so because of the, I know this person's gonna be an art director. It's like, no, don't think that way. Just be like, I'm being friends with this person because this person's awesome. <laughs> And then one day uh, they're going to be epic artists, and it's just inevitable. And this happened for me plenty of times, uh, not only just with my friends who grew up with me and grew up artistically with me, and even friends that I just grew up with me with since I was a kid. Uh, like, for instance, my uh, best friend is the one that's writing all the stories for these crazy illustrations I've been doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And we grew up together. Now he's trying to be a writer, and let's work together on that, you know? And something's coming of that. Um and then people like Kalen, the other Kalen, like uh, the one that t teaches in concept art, he's been there with me and doing workshops with me around the world. I have my students now hosting events and doing cool stuff. I have students working for great companies. I have friends that are starting to work for great companies, like some of my other friends, you know? It's just all, it's just like, this is how it works. If you just befriend somebody because they're good at art, uh, it's not enough, trust me. Because you're going to meet a lot of great artists that are, um, really great people, but you're always going to meet somebody that's not such a good person, but they're a great artist. Luckily, that's a very small few. Um, I know out of the 90, or out of the 100, let's say out of 100% of all the artists, artists I know, uh, about 5% of those people are garbage people. <laughs> okay? 
So that, that's good odds. That means you're going to run into mostly good people, right? But there are people, just because you're good at art doesn't make you good at life, right? So keep that in mind. Don't And plus, you don't want to work with those types of people, right? Like, you might meet an art director that loves your work, but they're treat you like shit. You know, but you're, you're nice to them and buddy-buddy to them just because you're like, well, I want an opportunity, right? And then the opportunity comes, and you start working for them, and then you hate your, your life. You hate every day because you're working with an asshole. <laughs> okay? Trust me. It happens. With that being said, I'm going to let you guys go now. See you guys. Have a great weekend. See you Tuesday. All right. See you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.